Hey everybody, it's your friendly neighborhood Vinyl Ginger and welcome to this very special edition episode of July 4th on the 5th. Happy birthday, America! Happy birthday, America! She... Happy birthday, America! Shut up! It's all really quite depressing. But in celebration, we are going to be reviewing Folk Songs for Conservatives by Noel X and his Unbleached Muslims. What, what did I just say? What? Noel X and his Unbleached Muslims? What, what the hell? Folk Songs for Conservatives is a parody album of folk songs in the day. It has titles such as Rock's Big Candy Mountain. Oh, that's really clever. And a conservative version of the song, Red River Valley. Oh man, this, this album is so good! The album was produced and written by a Mr. Noel E. Parmental Jr., who was a conservative journalist in the 1960s in New York City. He was kind of like the Sean Hannity of his day, only this guy didn't just like care about right-wingers, he hated everyone in general. He didn't seem to be very nice in his essays, and he smashed on a lot of politicians back in the day. And this album is really just an extension of that. The content itself is interesting, however, it's not very good. It's not recorded well, it's not really played particularly well. It's just interesting because of the content and what people were saying back then. Don't put fluoride in our streams, don't spray our willow tree. It's a comfy plot, it seems, to get us orally. Orally, orally, please don't poison me. Cast aside your pesticide down with DDT. What this album could be used for today is like a political science teacher who's trying to teach political history in a college classroom because it really says a lot about the conservative movements that were going on back then. You have this album talking about everything from race issues, civil rights, welfare, environmentalist issues, and it's really interesting because a lot of the same problems back then are a lot of the same problems we actually argue about right now. The album art is actually pretty cool. It's a hand-drawn picture of an eagle with several different different politicians face. I think you have Dwight Eisenhower on there and a couple of different guys. I don't know. I don't know who these political guys were back then. Why does it matter? The album is funny and cute sometimes if you could get past the mild racism or blatant racism. Unbleached Muslims! What the hell does that even mean? I tried to do a bunch of research on this album. I couldn't find a lot. I would say one of the most interesting things about this album is to see how political bases have changed in America. I mean, you have an album here called Folk Songs for Conservatives, and they're talking about protecting the environment, which is actually something that modern day conservatives aren't really concerned with. What I would really love to do is sit down with a political historian who could tell me a lot more about this album. If you know anything about the history, be sure to post something in the comments below because I'm interested to know the story about this album. It's really, really, really cool. However, the content can be a little bit cringy. It's anti-communism, it's anti-welfare, it's pro-capitalist, big time. Just, it's done in this vein that is just kind of rude to everybody. And I don't understand why people would put the money forth to make this album. I mean, honestly, who thought the idea Folk Songs for Conservatives was a money maker? I mean, these albums had to be written, the content had to be made, it had to be recorded, which was not cheap back then, and then it had to be pressed and then distributed. I, who thought this was a good idea? Shame on you, Toad Recordings. You can actually tell how cheaply the album is made because at one point some guy like messes up in the middle of his song. Well, in rocks big candy mouth. <laughs> WHY CAN'T WE DO IT AGAIN?! And what this album actually does is give a clear message to me that I need to work harder as an individual, as an American, to close the gap dividing people in America because our country, it is fragmented. We are polarized so much. And it's been polarized since before the 1960s. Things like this are just a symptom of the problem. All of these partisan things that we make to rile up the other side, it just makes other people feel bad and we don't listen to each other when things like this become a norm in our society. 
for its historical value, for the content that is in this album, and for the album art and the symbolism that is obviously imbued in it that I do not understand, I rate this album two and a half freckles out of five. It's not the worst thing I've ever heard. It's definitely not the best thing I ever heard. But, you know, it is historically significant. People should listen to these kinds of things to be aware of where we have come from and how far we've come and... That is honestly not that fun. Do I recommend picking this album up? Huh, well if you can get it for cheap, yes, I got it for cheap. I got it for three dollars, but actually the average price of this album is 40 to 60 dollars. So it's an expensive album. I don't think the person that sold it to me knew what they had. Uh, I didn't really know what I had either until I came home. But this album is awkwardly expensive. It's just awkwardly executed. And, you know, just not very good overall, but it is historically significant. So if you're a collector like me, who likes to understand things, who listens to vinyl to understand the cultural aspects of a time that you didn't live in, buy this record. Anyways, that's our review, guys. Happy birthday, America. I'm really glad to see y'all again. Sorry it took me so long to make another video. There's gonna be more videos coming out real soon. If you have any suggestions for me, be sure to hit me up at my email at vinylgingerofficial at gmail.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram, and we'll be back for another vinyl review, and hopefully this one won't be so cringy. Unbleached Muslims. Ugh!